Okay, welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to look at equivalent effective interest rates. So to explain this concept, I'm going to first look at an example. Now, suppose you have a thousand rands that you would like to invest, um, and you can choose between companies A and B. So for company A, you have an interest rate of uh, 14% per annum, and it's compounded quarterly. And then for company B, you have an interest rate of 13.2% per annum compounded quarterly. If you have to choose between these two companies, um, first of all, if we look at the compounding period, both of them are compounded quarterly. Uh, and if we compare the nominal interest rates, for A, we have 14%, for B, we have 13.2%. So it's actually quite clear that we would choose company A. Now, let's say we have the following situation. For company A, I have an interest rate of 14% uh, per annum, and it is compounded quarterly. And for company B, I've got 14% per annum annum and it is compounded monthly. Now in this case the interest or the nominal interest rates are the same 14% but if we compare the compounding periods you can see that the compounding period for company A is compounded quarterly for B it's compounded monthly and by now we know that the more often the compounding is done the uh, more interest will be earned. So for the second um, example, it is clear that we will choose company B. Now let's look at another one. For company A, we have a nominal interest rate, 14% per annum, compounded quarterly. For company B, 13.2% per annum, compounded monthly. So which one of these two would you prefer? If you look at the nominal interest rate for company A, as the higher nominal interest rate, so in that case, company A would be preferred. But if we compare the compounding periods, company A is compounded quarterly and company B is only compounded monthly. So which one would we prefer? Now that then brings us to um, ex the example and that's example 15 in your notes. A student has a thousand rands that she would like to invest for three years. Two competing lending institutions offer the following interest rates. Company A, 14% per annum compounded quarterly. And company B, 13.2% per annum compounded monthly. In which of the two companies should a student invest to maximize her return? So there are two approaches to an example like this. The first approach would be to calculate the future value for both options and then the second approach would be to find the equivalent effective interest rate. So let's just first do the first approach where we calculate the future value for both of these options. Okay so for A The future value is the present value, 1 plus i m over m. My present value is a thousand rands. And my um, quarterly effective interest rate is the 14% divided by my m, four quarters. And because the investment in this case is for three years, my m will be, um, this m here, will be. Uh, three times four for the three years, four quarters, so that will give me the 12. And that future value is then equal to this answer. That was for option A. For option B, It's my thousand rands that I invest. 
And now my nominal interest rate for company B was 13.2% and compounded um, monthly, so I divide that by 12. And then for the number of compounding periods, 3 times 12, because we invested for 3 years, that would give me 36. Okay, and now we can compare um, companies A and B, and we can see for A, the future value is higher than for company B, and therefore we would prefer the in to invest at company A. So that's one way of treating an example like this. But we would also like to be able to find an equivalent effective interest rate. So that let's just have a look at how to find an equivalent effective interest rate. That means that if we invest um, if we invest a certain amount, we will call that the present value. Then uh, at an effective interest rate IP, it must be the same as investing the same amount at an equivalent, or rather at an effective interest rate IM. Now because the present value will be the same, we are investing the same amount, we can cancel that out. And then to find the equivalent effective interest rate, we would like to solve for this IP. So to solve for that, to get rid of this exponent P, we will divide the exponent there by P, and therefore we also need to do it on the right. Okay, so let's just rewrite that. So what we have, we have 1 plus I P uh, in the exponent P over P, which is just 1. Okay, and then to get rid of this 1 on the left, I just subtract 1 on the left and I subtract 1 on the right. And then I get my equivalent effective interest rate IP. Okay, so this IP here, or, um, would rather let me just say this, that this is another important formula and you can add it to your list of formulas with the simple interest formula and the compounding interest formula, you can add this to that list of formulas. So this IP here is the equivalent effective interest rate. The IM is the effective interest rate that you will calculate from your nominal interest rate. Um, the M is the compounding periods for the given effective interest rate. P is the number of compounding periods for the um, equivalent effective interest rate. Okay, so we can go back to our example, example 15. Now, suppose we would like um, to find the equivalent monthly effective interest rate for company A. So now we can do the substitution into this formula. I would like to find the equivalent monthly effective interest rate. Now, I have the effective quarterly interest rate. My M is um, this quarterly effective interest rate. So my M is the 4. My P, the P here, and the, is equal to 12. My effective quarterly interest rate was the 14% divided by 4. This is equal to 12. And you get here that it is 0 0.0115 effective monthly interest rate. So we can say this is per month effective. And we compare that now to the effective 
monthly interest rate for company B. Now the effective monthly interest rate for company B, you will recall, let me just write it here, for B, the effective monthly interest rate I12 was equal to that 13.2% and we divide it by 12 to make it the effective monthly interest rate and that was 0 0.011. So now if we compare the effective uh, monthly interest rate for company B to the equivalent um, monthly effective interest rate for company A, you will see that for company A, the effective monthly interest rate is slightly higher, and therefore, again, we would prefer company A. We could also do it the other way around. We could also have calculated the equivalent quarterly effective interest rate for B and compare that to the effective quarterly interest rate for company A. Um, so you can do that as um, in your own time and see whether you get to the same result. Okay, so now what we often do is we calculate the equivalent annual effective interest rate for the two companies. So if we have the equivalent annual effective interest rates for both companies, then we can compare them directly and choose which company or which option you would prefer. So that is also um, been done in your notes. So let's just do that. So I have here my company A, and I would like to calculate for company A the equivalent effective annual interest rate. So for company A, I would like to calculate I1. Now, perhaps I should just write our little formula here again. So I, B, okay, so that's the formula. We would like to find the equivalent annual effective interest rate for company A. So I want to get I1. That is 1 plus IM. That is the effective um, quarterly interest rate for A. That's the one that we have available for company A. So that's the 0 0.14 divided by 4. My M in the exponent is equal to this 4. My P is the one that I'm trying to calculate. So my P is this 1, and I subtract the 1, and from that I get, uh, if we write it as a percentage, 14.7523% per annum effective, or per annum compounded annually. So that was for company A. Now for company B, we want to also calculate the um, equivalent annual effective interest rate. It's 1 plus, and now my IM, the effective monthly interest rate that we have for company B. My M in this case is now 12. My P is again 1. Okay, and now we can compare companies A and B directly because we have, for both of them, we have the equivalent annual effective interest rate. So we can compare these two directly because they are both um, uh, per annum effective. And again, by doing that, we would prefer company A. Okay, so we had different ways of um, comparing companies A and B. Um, and the last one which we did here by finding the equivalent annual effective interest rate and then comparing that, that is perhaps um, the best way to, to do this. In the next lecture, we will just look at example 16 and also how to use your financial calculator to find the equivalent effective interest rate.